So I hate doing these reports to my bosses to tell uh, them what, what we're working on, what our wins and all that stuff is. And I kept hearing about this company called 15.5 that has a better way to do that, because it's important for the bosses to know what's going on in the company and be able to drill in and see, see more detail about what's going on. This, this company is pretty interesting and uh, it might change your business. Who are you? So I'm David Hassel, uh, CEO of 15.5, and a serial entrepreneur. I've had a company since I graduated college, everything from an internet advertising tech company that I started in New York to an adventure travel company for kite surfers in Brazil. And uh, actually, how I came across 15.5 was in Brazil, running this kite surfing travel company and trying to manage my team back in New York. And I had all sorts of challenges with keeping in touch, and I'd fly back every six weeks. And so when I came across the idea for 15.5, um, it really resonated with me. This is something that the founder of Patagonia had come up with 25 years ago, back in the mid 80s, as a way that he could know what was coming on in his company, keep his employees feeling like they were engaged and empowered, even when he was taking half the year off to go climb mountains and surf. There's been other attempts to get employees to, to write better reviews for their uh, employers. Yeah. Um, what makes yours different, I guess? Well, I, th I think the big problem is that most of the attempts really suck for the, for the employees. And so, you know, while it's the managers or the CEOs who are, you know, our paying customers, you know, we treat the frontline employees as our primary customer. You know, we want to make this easy to use, yeah, one of our core design values is, is what we call elegant simplicity. And I like to think about how you know, simplic simplicity can live on both sides of complexity. You have the simple simple that anybody can do. But the elegant simplicity is kind of like what Apple did with the iPhone. They took something that inherently was convoluted and difficult to use and dumbed it down so that anybody, anybody could use it. And so we kind of have that ethos about how do we make this just super efficient, fun and easy to use for frontline employees so we get good information in and then the managers can, can review that and get good feedback. And I keep hearing about it from the entrepreneurs in, in the Valley. I think uh, Dave McClure at 500 Startups is using it, and Path is using yep. it, stuff like that. That's right. And um, so what, what does it let them do that other s systems don't do? The way the system works is it, it gathers feedback from all across the organization in an automated fashion. So if you're uh, you know, like Dave McClure and you're traveling all the time, you don't have time to follow up with people and check in. So he can log in at the end of the week and get a snapshot uh, of what's going on for his team, but his team will also have been able to roll up and escalate the key points. So what we do is we cascade information from the bottom to top, but then we also make the, the information two-way. It's almost like you think like a status report meets a social network. So once the information cascades up, he can reply to that You know, if something was bubbled up from, one, say, a frontline employee. Uh, they'll all be in a conversation thread, the frontline employee, the manager, the executive, and the CEO. And this is good for s companies under 500 or organizations under 500 people? Or, uh, yeah. Most it wouldn't work for a rack space, would it, with 4,000 employees? Or? It, we're getting there. Okay. So, so for, right now, most of our clients are in that, you know, say, 20 to 500 employee range. So we have a number of departments at large companies. We have lots of small, medium-sized businesses. And we're now building out the enterprise features. So we'll be moving into being able to support 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 employees with the product. If I wanted to use it on the marketing team, which is like, I don't know, 30 people here at Rackspace, um, how much would it cost? How do you charge for it? Yeah, we charge 49 a month. for That includes your first 10 employees. And then it's just a flat $5 an employee per month thereafter. Oh, OK. That's so, pretty, pretty reasonable and easy yep. to figure out. Um, what, what shows up on your screen? What, yeah, as, as Dave McClure, what would Dave McClure see on his screen, you know, a, a manager see on the screen? Yeah, the first thing that'll happen is when they log in, they'll see a list of their, say, five, eight employees that report to them. They'll see who's, who submitted the report, who hasn't. They can quickly remind people who haven't done it. And then they can go right into a really efficient workflow where they go right into the first employee's report. They can provide feedback on specific points and then click right to the next employee. Uh, if they actually report to someone higher than them, they can also flag items that they want to then bubble up. So when they're done, it says, OK, you've done reviewing your employees. Do you want to complete your own report? Pops them right into a screen with all the answers that they escalated. And, and for the employee, what do they see on their side as a reporter? Could I, 
I know I struggle, uh, you know, every Thursday I'm supposed to turn in this re report about what I accomplished this week. I don't know, I interviewed some cool executive, you know. Exactly. <laughs> so I, so totally. I, I struggle with explaining my value to the company. I, sometimes I have a great week and I, you know, made a million dollar sale or something, but most of the time is the same stuff as I did the week before. So. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, part of it is like we forget about this stuff. So, so you know, having the weekly reflection point is important, but we also allow it so that throughout the week you can keep adding to your report so you can build it throughout the week if you want to and it saves it as a as a like a template um, but but generally what happens is most employees log in once a week their their cursors right in the right place they start to type it creates a bullet point in the report and it pops them right to the next line they just quickly bullet point out your thoughts generally our customers focus on things like you know successes challenges new ideas and you know how morale is and usually we find out with those questions, we get a, a good 360 degree view for every employee, but our customers are actually coming up with awesome questions too, all sorts of things about, you know, what did you accomplish last week versus how do you think you're gonna improve next week and all sorts of different uh, different questions. And so can the employer put custom questions like that into? Yeah, yeah so we're, we're kind of question agnostic. We, we have a set of starter questions that we think work great for 80% of, uh, of clients, but, um, but you can, you know, delete them all out and put in your own. But that, that makes sense, right? If you're using them for a sales team, they need, they need different things than the engineering team. Exactly. Engineering team probably cares more about blocking issues or, hey, Joe is not turning in his code on time. Totally. So That's exactly I'm right. sitting there waiting you know, too long, you know, where the sales team is like, I, I need help you know, with this big account or something like that. Yeah, so generally like the questions I set are tend to be company-wide because they're, they're relevant to everybody, but then you can have group-specific questions for different departments. You could even have individual specific questions if there's some person in the organization, you know, like you, who has, you know, the talk about all the, you know, interviews you did this week, and you could list those out. How does it figure out what to bubble up to the to the CEO? Let's say. Yeah, we're not trying to get too smart about that. We're relying on, you know, actual human beings to decide what's important, and okay. so it's, it's so simply, each manager says each this manager is really cool. Each manager just flags the important things, and we, we we our goal is to just make that workflow as efficient as possible. Very cool. What else are you seeing happen? Because you're in the productivity space, which I, I find fascinating and yeah. I think is really uh, hot this year for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem that way, yeah. We're, well, uh, people are being asked to do more with less all the time. And, yeah. and also our flows of information continue to increase because email and social media and, and, and work just keeps bringing more and more data to us. So. Totally, and, that, and I think that's part of like, uh, part of the problem is there is too much information. So we're, we're, we're saying, you know, you don't actually need more information, you just need more concise information on a longer period of time. So that's why we do the weekly thing. One interesting thing we are finding though is that people are actually, and, and our customers keep telling us, they, their people seem to be much more candid and open in 15.5 than they do say in a face-to-face -face meeting on a one-on-one -on -one or in a group meeting. And some of the social dynamics we're learning about that, you know, around, um, you know, people just have social anxiety generally when they're face to face with somebody, but when they're with their computer and they have time to reflect, you know, they tend to be more open. So one of our big missions is trying to foster more open, transparent communication in organizations. And it seems that we've done a, you know, a good job right out of the gate. I'm seeing a lot of com different companies that are, I would call a new tool set for work. Is, is, are you seeing the same thing? Because you're in the middle of it, so you, I'm sure you're, you know, going to meetups and meeting, you know, and going to conferences and seeing other ideas that help people work together. Is that true? Is I think so. I think there's there's definitely a space emerging. I mean, the, you had uh, Austin made a big, a big splash, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, and now is gaining a lot of popularity as a you know, competitor to Basecamp. Podio, I keep hearing about. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got um, you know a lot of the stuff in kind of the social work, social goals, Salesforce buying Ripple, which they're now called yeah. Work.com, is you know kind of a lightweight competitor, say to Success Factors. So there's definitely a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of people trying to figure out how do we work more effectively as uh, you know, there's more, the, the, the speed of business is increasing exponentially and people are becoming more and more geographically distri distributed. And even if they're not geographically distributed, we're traveling and moving a lot. So yeah. we're not necessarily all in the same offices all the time. Do you have a mobile client yet, or are you thinking about tablet or mobile clients? Definitely thinking about it. We designed the app so that it, it works via mobile. Uh, device, but we don't have a specific mobile app. Surprisingly, a lot of people don't ask for it. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely something in our roadmap, but we have a few other things that are higher priority. 
no problem. How, uh, tell me about the company you're building. How was it funded, and how many employees are there? Yeah, so we've got we've got about six full time employees. We've got another six folks who are consultants, and we're now building the team. We literally just announced a round of financing in um, uh, in January, led by a group called Richmond Global out of New York. And Steve Dupree is the partner there. He uh, he was the number two guy uh, behind Sean Ellis that logged me in, and so he's he's on board helping with customer acquisition. Uh, David Sachs, Jason Kalkanis, uh, John Hamm, the founder of Ustream, all invested. Uh, Matt Brezina from Zobny, Ben Parr with his new Dominate Fund, uh, and a group of others. Very, very cool. Yeah. Good, good group of investors. Yeah. So, so what does your report look like? What, you know, because <laughs> you have employees. What, what does it look like? And so, what do you learn from it every week? Oh man, it's so interesting. So when we first designed the product. I was thinking, you know, this doesn't make sense for any group less than, say, 20 employees. In fact, we had our initial pricing was $99 for 20. And uh, once we had our third employee, I said, well, we, we better eat our own dog food. We've got to start using the product. And in the first week, I learned things about my team, who I'm joined at the hip with, that I had no idea about. And we started finding companies with three or five or eight people signing up for the $49 plan. And so it actually doesn't, you know, the cascading component of the application is really great, but just the fact that people stop and reflect and write these reports is where a lot of the value is. Even for the frontline employee who actually gets a, a chance to reflect on how they're doing. Um, so I get all sorts of interesting interesting things from my team about you know how they're feeling, what's working, what's not, you know, when they're on track, when they're off track, and I can engage really quickly and uh, you know make sure they have the support they need. Sounds really great. Where do I learn more about it? Uh, 15.5.com. It's uh, 15.5.com. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming in and yeah. shouting to me. Thanks for having me.